Angela Wolf here, and we are behind the scenes, literally. Uh, I'm a couple minutes late because you cannot make this up. <laughs> the UPS guy came and brought some more packages. I've got a lot more treats for everyone coming, but uh, this time I did make my top today. I just finished it, but this time I made sure I had something on while I was hemming it because same time every day. I should know that by now, right? <laughs> I knew you'd get a laugh about that. So anyways, it would have been even funnier if they walked in while you were here, but uh, it was a couple minutes before you. So I see you all. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Great to see you, Emily. So today we are working on, let me check here if I got everything out. We're going to be pressing. We are working on some stretch velvet. Emily, I am on now. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I'm going to give you some tips for sewing on stretch velvet. So am I wearing stretch velvet? No. This is another one of those knits that we that I bought. Uh, if you saw my outfit last week, it was out of this fabric here. I'm loving these prints because I can wear a sweater. Like this is a dark blue. So let me step back. So it looks cute with uh, jeans. I can wear a sweater over it. I can wear a fleece over it. It's comfortable. I made the ruche tee out of this with the twisted collar. So you can see I've got a little ruching on the sleeves. And for the ruching for the body, I did ruching, let's see, let me feel. I did ruching all the way down one side. I think that's this side. And then this side, I only did ruching from here, right in the waist. Just a little bit, you know me, I like my asymmetrical looks. So yes, this knit is still on there. I think there's, I've got about a half a bolt left. This and this one. And I have to say, I got a lot of emails from you guys. This is not on Angela Wolf Patterns website. It's on the app. So you have to download the app. If you download the app, that's where you can find this fabric. It's still marked off uh, until the end of the week. So that was one email that I got from quite a few of you. And hey, Karina. Oh, my gosh. It's November 10th. How did I forget? Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And happy, I think it's your anniversary too, if I'm not correct. That's how you always remember this. This is Wynn and R's anniversary from our first date, November 10th, 1994. So how many years is that? 04, 14, a lot. We're almost, we're almost going on 30 years. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, 30 awesome years, that's for sure. Rhonda, your pattern is on the way. I believe it got picked up this morning. So uh, one more quick thing about fabric before I go on. I put quite a few different um, fabrics on the app. And if you look at the app right now, there are like six different velvets. And the velvet was supposed to be here on Monday. Of course, whatever. For whatever reason, it's coming tomorrow. I just got the UPS update. So let me show you what's coming. Many of you must have gotten the alert on your phone because you already ordered before I could even tell you that it was a pre-order. So let me just show you what's in. And I'll show you some of the colors. There's red, there's uh, navy, there's fuchsia. I don't think there's very much of the fuchsia left. There's turquoise. I found some more burgundy and I found a little more black. And then you can also see right below there, this is the pink fabric that I'm wearing right now. And you can order right from your app. Anyways, the velvet will be here tomorrow. I will be cutting it up and shipping it out tomorrow. So that will be my job. <laughs> I love it. I love new fabrics and I love velvet, but I have a new toy <laughs> for everyone. And I'm gonna be giving one away at the end of the show today. So all you have to do, you just have to be live, be live present to win, leave a comment, and I am live on the Angelo of YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch pages. If you leave a comment, all of the comments go into this little software. It's a random drawing, and somebody's going to win the new thread cutters. So have you seen this? You know I love thread cutters. All right, so I talked to the guys recently, and they had given me this a while ago, and I was playing with it. Of course, Wynn took it because it's great for fishing. So it has a retractable cord. I think it's 36 inches long. It has, or you slide this down. They're basically long nose snips, right? And if you slide this up, it locks in place. So slide down to cut, slide up. And can you see what's on there? Yes, the Angela Wolf. So, comes in black. This is the packaging. 
They are on the website right now. I just got these in earlier. So you can hang it. Well, what Wynn was doing is he was putting it on his belt buckle. So then when he was fishing, he could cut with these. But anyways, these are brand new, limited edition. And um, somebody's going to win a pair at the end today. So all you have to do is leave a comment why you would like these or why you like watching behind the scenes or hanging out with the wolf pack. Any of the above is fine. <laughs> All right, so let me make sure that you are all here. You can hear me and, oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, I think last week, if you missed last week's show, we cut out that velvet and it cut beautifully. I did the burgundy first. I'm doing that into a, um, a Bella. And of course, you know, I have a few other ideas coming up. It's your birthday, Karina. I knew it was something that we had the same. <laughs> Why did I think anniversary? I don't know. Well, it kind of is. It's your birthday anniversary. Happy birthday, Karina. I haven't been online this morning. I guess, how did I miss that? <laughs> I know. Yeah, you guys are pretty quick when I do fabric. Well, that's why I kind of like the app because it, it puts it in there right away and then you get a little alert. Right. Okay, so Everybody in? You're all here? Okay, so just leave a comment during the show and you're all entered into this giveaway. So I'll make sure, let me bring this up to make sure I have it correct. I, this is um, Behind the Scenes episode 246. I will start collecting comments now. So, all right. He did, I know, he did like that, Dee, for fishing. Totally funny. <laughs> there you go, Mary. All right, so let's go work on the stretch velvet. I, you kind of gave me a little idea last week, so I can't do both in one episode. So let's go over to the table and I'll show you what we're gonna do today. <laughs> That's what I need, Phyllis, GPS, totally. Okay, so over here, remember last week, when we were cutting this velvet and I remembered I had my lace. So I decided I'm not going to add it to this top. Instead, I'm going to embroider smaller pieces from Embroidery Collection 2. So just think of that green jacket that I have that um, where I added the really small trims. I'm gonna go embroider some of that. We're not gonna embroider today, though. We'll embroider next week and add it to the top after we've sewn it. So we're gonna add it to the top before we put in the beautiful facing. So this was the burgundy. Uh, this you can see I've already started working on my next top. This is a dark royal blue and I think I got one more bolt of this coming. So uh, just so you know. Okay everything's cut with if you felt it every uh, the fuzzies are going in the down direction in the down direction right. Okay so I've got the front. I've got the back and I've got the sleeves. Now, these, this is the Bella, remember, so I'm doing these longer sleeves with the elastic at the end, okay? Now, I could actually just do that without the elastic if I want and just let it hang kind of like a bell sleeve. I don't know. We'll see what it looks like, but I'm cutting this sleeve out right here, and actually, this is kind of what I'm thinking is I'm going to embroider a trim to go around the neckline out of tulle and then attach it to the top, similar to that. But today is sewing. All right, so I've got both sleeves and I've got both front and back. We're not going to worry about the facing today in case um, I decide to add embroidery. All right, any questions on that so far? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, you could put this around your neck if you wanted to because it could just tie like that. That <laughs> I don't think that's what you'd want to do. <laughs> um. Okay, now I'm stuck. Don't let me cut my hair. <laughs> I'm going to put this on my belt loop. That's why I wore jeans today. I know. A very odd thing for me. It's usually uh, different <laughs> different uh, leggings. A new day, new leggings. That's, all, that's my word. Hey, Monica. Great to see you. <laughs> she wants to sing happy birthday to Karina. All right, Monica, you go for it. And actually, you have a really good voice, so that wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> all right, so let's go to the sewing machine. And let me give you a few tips. Now, am I really going to sew this with a sewing machine? Well, actually, I do quite often first, and then I run it to the serger. I always run it to the serger, though, because you know how much this, like all the little fuzzies can keep coming off as you wash them. 
So if you don't have a serger, then you're gonna to want to at least use the overlock stitch on your sewing machine. So today I have the sewing machine set up. I don't think you need to watch me serge today, but I'll give you some tips for sewing. Okay, let's go to the machine. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Liz, velvet plus lace equals happy. I agree with that. <laughs> I know that fabric is a dark, dark purple is what it was. Okay, so sewing machine we are. So if you look on here, there's a few different stitches that you can use. Now, I'm also going to show you a few other tools to use that you might have on your machine, but I know not everybody has this, so I'm going to try to make it pretty universal. All right, so if I sew with a straight stitch, I always like my needle in the center position. And I'm gonna use a narrow stitch length, uh, not a longer one. So maybe 2.5 will be fine. Uh, the reason being is because that fabric can really move while you're holding it together. You'll watch when I sew what I use for that. But if, uh, because it's a stretch velvet, and you can see it does stretch a little bit, not a lot going up and down though. It mostly stretches to the width. So this is a stretch velvet, but it's not like a knit top like what I'm wearing. OK, so you can get away with a straight stitch. But if you decide, you know what, I better be careful because I don't want to pop any seams. Then you have a few options. You have what they call. It's called a stem stitch, but they use this. I call it the lightning stitch. I'll bring you in a little closer. It's not my favorite stitch, but it does work for this. Uh, basically, it just stitches back and forth. So when you stretch your fabric, it will stretch with you. Now, when I use that stitch, though, the one thing that I do change is I change the stitch length to be a little bit longer. I'll probably go to a 3.5. I'll test that stitch first. But to give you an idea, all right? And I'll, I'm gonna do that on a scrap piece of fabric just to show you what that is. Another option is you can just use just a little zigzag stitch. There's a stretch zigzag stitch, which looks like that. There's a regular zigzag stitch and there's the stretch one. It almost looks like there's little, let me bring you really close. You see that? There's the regular, and then there's the stretch, where it almost looks like it's stopping in the middle and then over. There you go. They call it the elastic zigzag. But that one works well, too, for stitching this. But if you're going to use this, then you need to change your width to be not very narrow. So I would change it to about a 2.0 and I would change the length. I'll test it, but probably it's gonna be close to a 1.6. So those are two things if you're just stitching. So I'll grab my extra fabric here just to show you what these look like. All right, that's not my extra fabric. <laughs> Where are you? Okay, I've got a little piece here. So I'm going to show you those. And then the other thing that I use is the move it foot. So just come on over here and bring you in just a little bit closer. How's that? You can see pretty good from there, right? All right. And why I, while I do this, I want to show you actually how I hold the fabric. Because I don't usually pin my tops ever. I might pin at the shoulder seam when I'm putting my sleeves in. Uh, just mostly for marking, but when you're sewing with the velvet, remember when you cut, we only cut one layer because it slides together. Well, wait till you sew it together. When you have both of those furry sides together, it can really get a little messy. So if you have the move it foot, which looks like this here, this is another tool or the walking foot works great for sewing on velvet. So for those of you that have one of the brother machines with the move it foot, it has the band on the back. This plugs into the back of the machine. Full disclosure, I am a brother brand ambassador in case you're new to this party and didn't know that. <laughs> but I use it because I love it. So here's a foot, the foot that goes on just snaps in place and you have a guide on the side. If it's up, this rolling band is not activated. If this is down, it's activated. So you can adjust the tension in the machine to adjust how quickly the top layer and your bottom layer are sewing. Different than a walking foot where it's just walks, this one actually has a brain. 
go figure. <laughs> so that's another great tool. If you have that, you want to pull it out of the box and use it for the sewing with it, the velvet because it just makes it so much easier, a lot easier. So I'm just checking if you have any questions before I go on to sewing. Oh, hey, Mary, great to see you. Uh, Anne, on the app, the red velvet looks ribbed and different appearance. Um, nope, it's the same. So there's red. I took a picture of a, like a piece like that big to get it on there. So it's all the same. It's all the exact same velvet. There's red, there's fuchsia, there's black. Um, did I order brown? I think I ordered brown, but I haven't put that on the website yet. So you'll have to just watch. stay tuned for that. I want to see what it looks like when it comes tomorrow. Or were they out of brown? I can't remember. But anyways, let me see what the picture. Yeah, no, these are just like really close up pictures of the fabric. They're the same, though. All the same. <laughs> I think I bought them out of velvet. But it was only because I got messages from many of you that said, hey, wait, wait, I want some. And by the way, on the app, as I'm scrolling down, if you keep scrolling down, there's that green fabric of the top that I wore last week. Those are all rayons. They're so comfortable this time of the year. And then if you scroll down further, you'll see the royal purple and the royal blue. And where it says waitlisted, that means it's out. So just in case you didn't know that. Okay. Uh, when I sew velvet, I sew the seam in the direction that the nap is going down. Mary, that's exactly what I do as well. So I actually sew from the top to the bottom. All right. Any other questions for me before I go? Uh, yeah, Mary. There's a lots of Marys in here today. The walking foot would work. So you could use the walking foot. If you have the move it foot, though, it's just even better. But the walking foot would work. Oh, Patty, red's going to be gorgeous for the holidays. Uh, where can you get the pattern? Well, you can get the pattern uh, right here on the app as well. Or you can go to Angela Wolf Patterns for the app. I, not to confuse you guys with so many different websites, but that's, let me just bring this up. Before we go, so, uh, by the way, I just thought this is where you can go get the pattern. Okay, by the way, we're talking about sewing with velvets. We're talking about using unique fabrics and things like that. Talking about using great features on the Brother Machine. By the way, in case you missed it, and this is totally off topic for a second, but I think you need to see this. Uh, those of you that wanted to go to the California Sew Fest, the Sewing Fest, uh, the, their website is sewingfestival.com. Have any of you noticed that uh, they posted all the classes. Actually, they just did that on Monday. And this coming Monday is when uh, it's all going to be open. Now, if you want to join me, I'm teaching quite a few classes. So I will be in the brother room. Let me bring this up. I think it's January. Let me just share this real quick. Then we'll go back to the sewing machine. This is a squirrel because somebody just mentioned it. Uh, plus it's live. Who cares, right? Here you go. For those of you that want to go to this, here we go. It's in Ontario, California. I just brought up their website. Uh, so put in, right when you sign up for the, go to their website, it'll say, do you want to sign up for the emails? Make sure you do that so you're notified. Uh, I'm going to click on the X just so you can see what's going on here. It's January 13th to 15th. Uh, here's the class schedule. There's vendor information. Uh, so click on class schedule. And then I just want to point this out that when you go here at the top, here's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, I will actually be teaching all four days. So on Thursdays, if you scroll down, you'll see where my class is. There's a lot of great instructors here. It's going to be really hard for you to decide what you're going to go see. But here you go. Uh, we're going to embroider on tool. Now, what are you going to do in these classes? It's three hours hands on. So you will actually be embroidering um, in some of my other classes. We're going to be designing fabric with yarn. I've got a whole bunch of cool things that'll be uh, really fun for garment sewing. But how you get to each one is at the top again. Go to Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. 
I'll be teaching two classes there. Uh, Sunday's kind of the transition when the Quilt Fest comes in and the Sew Fest ends. So if you're sticking around Sunday, there's going to be two really good classes. Embroidery on Knits, which might give you some ideas for this. And we're going to be making wealth pockets and bound buttonholes. But you're not going to be watching me. You're going to be doing it. And you're, everyone is going to be on a Luminaire. You know what that means? That means space is limited. <laughs> so if you want one of these classes, make sure on Monday when they open up that you sign up right away. Uh, there's kit fees included with these because I bring all the fabrics for you. You don't really need to bring anything to any of the classes except some good sewing scissors um, and just like basic sewing supplies, maybe some pins and stuff, but you really don't even need that. So anyways, this is so festival and I saw somebody talking about that and I want to make sure I threw that in here uh, right in between. So they have a ton of great classes. Also, there's going to be a fashion, sh a fashion <laughs> show. Thursday night, I will be presenting a fashion show and there's also a VIP after. And then Friday, Dancing with the Stars, uh, Joe, uh, I'm going to be helping them out as well. We'll be doing outfits from Dancing with the Stars. That's Friday night, also with the VIP. So are any of you in California, you definitely want to check this out. And I think some of you actually were going to go visit friends there. So the classes open on Monday, Monday, the 15th. So don't miss that. Space is very limited. Okay, so that's where you find the Bella pattern. And now, <laughs> uh, Kelly, that probably means there's going to be some fabulous pricing at the event. There's always good pricing when you go to the events. Those are like, that's the best time to buy, actually. All right, Kelly, I noticed in the group several folks asked what type of thread to use on the velvet and wondered if you have woolly thread for the serger. Yeah, so in the serger, I will use the woolly, my woolly poly. I will use it in the loopers for the serger and in the looper for the cover stitch. But for the regular needles, I just use regular universal thread, nothing special. I'm not using stretch thread or anything like that. All right, any other questions before I go to the sewing machine? Hey, Helen, great to see you. Oh, Robin, I'll get to see you in January, that's awesome. Uh, Anne, I cannot show you the teal velvet because it's coming tomorrow. All those I posted up there were pre-orders. So it will be arriving between 11 and 1.30. <laughs> if there's any left, I can show it then. Okay. Oh, they have beautiful outfits. Let's go back to the sewing machine then. I think I got your questions. The only thing I did not mention though is uh, you, you're going to want to use, I use a stretch needle. You can use a stretch or a ballpoint needle, whichever one you prefer. If you have one laying around, I would probably go with the number 11. You could even go smaller if you want, but 11 will usually work. All right, make sure I don't miss anything before I move over. <laughs> there you go. I'll put the website up while I'm over there. Okay. Hi, Beverly. Great to see you. Don't forget, everyone, as I go back over there, make a comment and you can win this at the end of the show. Back to the sewing machine. Uh, Mary, do I have Wooly Polly in the dark purple? I'll check at the end here. All right, back to the machine. I just walked away with my fabric so to show you a couple things here. Okay, I'm going to use this as just a practice piece of fabric just to show you a couple of these stitches. Actually, why don't I use this? This is the knit I just finished making my top with. This has a lot of stretch compared to the velvet, but I think you'll get the idea. So if I want to use the lightning stitch, I'll go ahead and put the lightning stitch on there. I already showed you where that is, but actually I have the, I have the zigzag stitch set up right now. Let's go ahead and stitch that just for a second. I would test this to see what it looks like. As you can see, it's going back and forth. You see what that looks like? Now, is it gonna look like that on your seam? No, but what happens is when you put your top on, it will stretch a little bit. And that way you won't rip out your side seams, your shoulder seams or anything like that. So that's a light zigzag stitch. Now you could go wider if you have a super stretchy fabric, but this width will probably be fine for the stretch velvet. I'd probably go a little wider with this knit because it's pretty stretchy. All right, let's go back to the lightning stitch. If you just you just jumped in now you'll have to go back because i already showed where this is on the machine 
I'm going to change the length to, let's start with a 3.5 and see what that looks like. I'm going to bring my machine up just a little bit because it's just below. Other way, wrong way. There we go. All right, so you can just, if you look closely, can you see that lightning stitch? And what happens, look at how much that stretches compared to even the zigzag stitch. The zigzag stitch stretches a little, the lightning stretch st stitch stretches a lot. Big difference there. So if you're sewing your seams, the lightning stitch does work. I just like to have it longer. I might even go a little bit longer because see how many itsy bitsy stitches are in there? You don't want to damage your fabric. All right, so for myself, because I'm gonna run this through the serger, and when I run it through the serger, I'm going to cut off the stitches that I do or get right next to them. I'm going to sew with just a simple straight stitch. And I've tried to make the camera a little bit lighter just so you can see. All right, so let's do the shoulders first. I always put the front of the garment on the top, just my preference. I definitely do that for the serger because if you serge from the top or from the front side, always rolls to the back. So if I have my shoulders together here, I run to the serger from the front of the garment, it'll fold to the back. Does that make sense? All right. So uh, right now I'm using a straight stitch because I'm going to use a serger and I'm going to stitch right at my half inch seam, seam allowance. I'm starting in just a little bit. Don't start right on the edge because this fabric can easily get stuck in that hole on your needle plate. Does that make sense? I'm using contrasting threads so you can see it. I think I'm using like a bright red. So I start in just a little bit. Now, if you're worried about your fabric getting stuck in there, you can change to a single needle plate, but then you definitely cannot. That means no way can you use a zigzag stitch or lightning stitch if you're using the single hold plate. Okay. I'm going to do one back stitch. And watch how I'm holding both of the pieces of fabric together. I'm not allowing the bottom to feed faster than the top. And if you're looking at this saying, what is that point? That's usually your seam allowance. So now when I press this to the back, that matches up perfectly. In case you were ever wondering about that. Let me make you just a little bit brighter because I know this burgundy is hard to see. So hold on one second. Is that a little better? Blinky. Okay, so I'll show you that one more time. When you sew, you have this almost like a triangle that sticks out. The idea, though, is when you press this back, it lines up right with the shoulder seam, in case you ever wondered why that was like that. I had somebody ask me one day, they said, you don't know how to do the inside of your neckline. I go, well, then you don't know what I was trying to do. <laughs> I was trying to make sure that that lined up perfectly once you folded it back. All right, so again, I've got my second shoulder. I'm laying everything flat. If you have to use pins, you can, but you know you really don't need to. The shoulder seems kind of pretty much just stick together. Again, don't start at the very edge. Do a couple stitches and then do a back stitch. So you can see that stitch because I'm using contrasting. I tried to use something though that I could still use it. You can't see it from the right side. So we should be fine. And when I go to run this through the serger, I will run it and just go right on the edge of that stitch line. You can just serge way out here and leave that extra seam allowance if you want. It's totally your preference. But the shoulder seam, I'm using a narrow stitch, a 2.5. You can see it still has a little bit of a give, which is fine. Don't use a longer stitch length though, or what'll happen is you won't be able to stretch that at all. 
All right, so that's your shoulders. The next thing we're gonna stitch in place is the sleeves. But before we do the sleeves, I wanna take you over, let's see, are we going to press up this hem? Yeah, some of you asked about pressing on velvet. So let's go take care of that first. I'll meet you at the ironing board. On my way, I'll double check if you have any questions for me. Oh, thanks, Betty. Jackie, some zigzag stitch won't backstitch. That's interesting. Uh, Marsha, I don't see the navy on the app. Hmm. Did I forget to put the navy on the app? Nope, it's on the app. It looks like black. It's right underneath the clappers. Those four pictures are the most pathetic pictures I've ever taken, but I, honest to goodness, the swatch was like this big. So I just tried to put it up there because I figured if you pre-ordered, then I would know how much to buy. So I just bought everything they had. Oh, hey, Jerry. Great to see you. All right. So let's go talk about pressing. The pressing on velvet is a huge no-no, unless you have uh, an iron shoe. Now, I know some people who will use a press cloth. That's fine. I would more opt to get an iron shoe. And honest to goodness, I think they're maybe under $5. I mean, I don't know. During COVID, maybe they've gone up in price like everything else. But uh, the iron shoe will protect your iron from the fabric. So as you know, I'm using the Laura Star iron. I also use another iron that I've had forever from Wawak. It, that came with an iron shoe as well. That's a super hot iron. But you can buy an iron shoe. I don't sell these. So I mean, this isn't, I'm just giving you information of what you might want to go look for. I think I found a few and put them on my Amazon page for my uh, influencer page. I'll double check. Maybe I'll pop in there and make sure that I found, because it's been a while. So make sure that that company still has them. But basically it's a protection that goes under your iron and it protects that, that metal from hitting your fabric. So let's go over and I'll show you what I use to get my hems on velvet because velvet can be really tricky. All right, I'll see you over there. We'll take the scenic route over there, I guess. <laughs> All right, and I see a few more questions. I'll come over there too. Karen asked, what if your brother's machine will only stitch forward and not backwards? Uh, Karen, are you, which stitch is that? The lightning or the um, just the regular zigzag stitch? Just out of curiosity. Oh, let me bring that comment down. Sorry about that. Okay. So again, I'm using the Laura Star Iron. You've seen me use this. I have to spray out some steam before I bring it up. If you look at the bottom, I think I can take this off with you on. Yeah. Oh, my iron shoe needs a little clean out. Clean up in aisle five. How hot is that? Pretty hot. Hold on a second. So this came with my iron, and I also have one that comes with my other iron as well. It's a definitely haven't cleaned that out. Wow. I guess that's like somebody looking at your linen closet or something. I don't know. <laughs> there. So look at the bottom. The bottom, it's like, um, I don't know exactly what this would be. I know if you buy one, a lot of times it's almost a paper or a Teflon, something of some sort. So don't quote me on this. I'm just saying this is a protective. This is plastic on the edges. My iron slides right in here snaps in and now I have a protective layer for my fabric. Now, again, I will try to look up some in case you're really, you're like, I have no idea. This, they have ones that will fit your iron. It'll give you kind of dimensions. So I'll see what I can find on Amazon for you. I know I bought some on Wawak before, if you've ever gone there. Joe, I can't remember if Joe had these in his web store or not. If you're gonna be a Novi, you might wanna stop by Joe's booth. I know that he, I told him he should carry some of these, but I don't know if he, he got ended up getting them or not. 
All right, so for this, this is my sleeve. You know I like to press my hems up first. Uh, I'm going to press this up once because if I'm going to add elastic in here, I'm just going to use a cover stitch for the edge. I don't need to double fold this. So I'm folding this up once. I've got just about an inch hem allowance. Of course, follow your pattern directions. Give it a little steam. Now, I want to give you a tip. If you do not have an iron shoe, you can hold your iron above the fabric. That's about how high I am. I'm not ironing over my fingers, by the way. But give it a little steam. From above. And then use your tailor's clapper because that steam will combine with your tailor's clapper. I am just loving this shirt, by the way. <laughs> it's fun for fall. It's actually rayon, so I could wear it in the spring too. All right, so I'm holding my iron just above, giving it some steam and using the tailor's clapper to hold that hem. So uh, speaking of hemming, my mom said that she's been hemming. Oh, let me make sure I didn't push that too hard. Uh-oh, what do I have there? Little spots because I'm talking. Oh, oh no. Okay, let me do this one more time. Maybe I can get rid of that. But if not, I got to cut another sleeve. Is it going away? Let's you see that right there? That's what I'm talking about that you do not want. Can you see that little shiny spot? Because I was talking, and I think, is it coming out? There's a couple of ways you can try to fix the fabric, but I think I might have burnt her. So much for telling you what not to do. Let me just show you what not to do. <laughs> All right, now can you barely see that? But it's there. It's a little burn. I'll brush it with my, you can brush it with your fingernails. Sometimes you can get the fibers back, but I think I actually burnt. You can definitely see it down here. A good place to add some embroidery or I'll cut a new sleeve. Anyways, my point was if you gave just a little bit of steam, you can actually see this crease line here. So when I go to sew, I can just fold that up. Now, what you don't want to do is sit there and talk for 10 minutes while you have that in place. <laughs> That's what you don't want to do. Now, this sleeve, by the way, will have elastic in it, and this will billow down just a little bit. So I might be able to either, it's only these two little, well, actually, there's like three little spots. I can probably get by with using this sleeve. Uh, it's also underneath my sleeve, and you're going to have elastic, so it's going to be gathered. If this was going to be a ruched tee where this is going to be fitted, that isn't going to cut it. Can you see that shininess there? There you go. So anyways, moral of the story is don't talk uh, to your friend on the phone. <laughs> don't hang out with the wolf pack while you're trying to press velvet. Moral of the story. So I'm going to do this side real quick. This is why both sides pressed up. Give it a little steam. Hold the clapper in place. Give it a little steam. There you go. And we have a little crease. Don't hold the clapper there too long either because the clapper can get very hot and also melt your fabric. So it's kind of a tricky type of deal, but that's how I like to do that. All right, so let's talk about our sleeves. When I go to sew my sleeves in place, I will start pinning and I have my shoulder notch at the sleeve and I have my back. I always mark my back notches with two and my front I never mark because I know on my pattern that this fits perfectly. So I just give myself these two notches so I know which side is the back. Okay, let me come up here and see if you have any questions on pressing. How is our hour almost up? Amazing, isn't it? All right, so grab my glasses here. Uh, Jackie, how much is the fabric? Let me check. It's on sale right now because it was from our last fabric stash sale. It is on sale for, this fabric's on sale too, $15.50 instead of $21. 
the velvet's $13 instead of $18.99. So that's quite a bit off. Uh, Karen, what do you do if your brother won't stitch forwards or backwards? So I wanted to see which stitch are you talking about? Because, well, if it won't stitch forward, won't stitch forward, only backwards. Karen, that sounds like um, a problem. <laughs> If you want to send me a private message, I can send you to customer service too, because I, I read that wrong. I was thinking, what stitch doesn't go backwards? Um, make sure that your front and back, you know, the knob, depending on what machine you have, isn't stuck. But private message me on that. Maybe I can walk you through that. Sounds like you might have to get it fixed. So did you get it? Now, did you see how to use that iron shoe? You just put it in place. And now, by the way, if I wasn't using velvet, if you have an iron shoe, I can actually put that iron on top of faux leather. Speaking of faux leather, you know that um, brown faux leather that I did all the quilting with the Ponte knit and things like that? That class I'm teaching in California as well. But I could put that whole iron on top of there with no problem. Uh, Elizabeth, you can get it at Wall Walk. You can also get it <laughs> at um, on Amazon. So I'll see if I can find a link for you. I was thinking the same thing, Susan. Oh, thanks, Marsha. They have lots of iron shoes. Uh, the regular project runway model. Yeah, Karen, message me or I have your email. I will um, get you in touch with Brother Customer Support, which they're great, by the way. All right. Anything else? <laughs> Susan just like the toaster. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, Jackie, thanks for the info. Uh, my iron shoe only goes around the edge. Yeah, that's the same thing. They, If you have a general one, it'll just like go on the bottom. Make sure it's on the bottom, though. It should go on the bottom and around the edge. And does this one only work on this iron? Well, this one came with this iron, so it actually fits it like a glove. So if you're getting a general one, then it might be um, it might be a little bigger as long as it protects the bottom of your iron. Susan said hers goes around the edge too. Yeah, Marcia, they do. They have um, a velvet, gosh, I haven't heard that word in so long, velvet press pads. They do have that. And also when it comes to pressing seams open and things like that, I rarely will press those open because what will happen is you've got both of those layers of fabric and your hem allowance, and you can end up with like a line where you're, say you're pressing your seams to the back. You can end up with a line because it'll pick up that extra piece of fabric. Um, if you have stretch velvet and you're making, say, a jacket or something, or a regular velvet where you have princess seams and things like that, you have to be very, very careful how you press those seams if you're going to press them at all. So, yeah, it's a definitely a tricky thing. Oh, Ivy, I have seen that. She pressed rubber stamp designs in her velvet. I would, uh, that's very cool, by the way. Glenda's, Glenda, are you on a cruise? Finally. Did I, how did I miss this? My goodness gracious. Have a wonderful time. And yes, a velvet board is perfect to use, by the way, if you have one. I have one somewhere. I just never seem to pull that out. A uh, toothbrush works to, for rubbing that fabric out. You just have to be careful. If you rub too hard, you can get rid of the fibers. Okay, Phyllis. Oh, press over a towel will limit steam holes. That is true. Also, if you rub the fibers together, sometimes I just use my hand. Just make sure you don't have oils on your hand or anything like that. Okay, any other questions before I go sew our sleeves? <laughs> Yolanda saying, does anyone still have velvet boards? Yeah, do you guys know where you can get those at this point? <laughs> Denise. It, it is a design. That's exactly what I intended it to be. Oh, so Susan, by the way, you I've never tried steaming over ink dye, but there is a product that you can put on the velvet that will actually burn it out. The only thing is it has to be a natural fiber. And this is a polyester 
velvet, not a silk velvet. So I haven't tried it on this fabric, but there are some really cool ways to make burnout on velvets. Totally. All right. Anything else? Sorry, I got to keep putting my glasses on to see what you are all talking about. I agree. I agree. Oh, Anne. Anne has a suggestion for you, Karen. Make sure your feed dogs are not down or, you know, stuck down. Uh, Joanna, any iron shoe that fits your iron is fine. Yes. Oh, Waywack has velvet boards. All right, I'll go look those up. You know, I'm finishing your newsletter for like the, the second week. Your newsletter is going to be like this long when it goes out. Probably go. it's going to go out this evening because I have a ton to remind you of. Classes coming up, things like that. Um, there's a free class next Wednesday. Don't forget about. Uh, but all that will be in the newsletter this evening. And if I can find uh, the velvet board and I can find the iron shoe that I have, I'll put links. I also have a discount code to uh, Laura Star Irons that I could share in there too. Uh, Monica, would you sew your hems first? I would not sew my hems first. I would sew the garment first and then hem. Uh, Patty, do they historically hand stitch seam allowances down? You know, I don't know. Not with velvet. I don't know. Jackie, I would not just use a steamer for doing that. You really, um, because the steamer, that's a lot of steam. This is just steam from an iron. So it's even, it comes out evenly. A steamer is like a narrow, I, I probably would not just my personal preference, just in case you hit a little spot too hard, <laughs> that could be bad. Oh, hey, Trisha. Finishing the last of your mom's house. Oh, gosh. Hope it goes well. All right. I think that's it. Hey, Kelly, I wonder if Joe has velvet boards for us. We could call him. I think he's in Novi. <laughs> Amazon has one. Oh, yeah. Look at Wawak. Definitely. Nice to see you, Mary. All right. So let's go sew those sleeves. And then I'm going to sew the entire rest of the garment. Now, I'm not going to run it through the serger. So uh, let's see. How am I going to do that if I don't run it through the serger? I might have to run it through the serger. <laughs> We're going to have to do both. What do we have? 10 minutes. How fast can we finish this top? Well, I made this in 30 minutes this morning. Let's get rolling. Grab your snippers. All right. I'll go back over here. And then I'm going to take you over to the serger. So let me just move this. See if I can bring one camera over to the serger. I'll tell you what, hang out for one second because I don't think I can bring you all the way over there. Let me just serge the shoulder sleeves so I can finish my sleeves. You keep each other happy or company, I should say. Sing Karina happy birthday. Told you it wouldn't take long. So this is what we have. Oh, I like these. Just snip these right off my belt. Get rid of some of that extra fabric here or extra thread. I don't know if Susie's on here today, but Susie, thank you for fixing my serger. Speaking of serger doctors, it works perfect. So you can see my stitch line and then I ran it through the serger. I'm just using black thread because you can see it. You're never going to see it from the front side. So I've left myself a little bit of a seam allowance, but it still stretches enough. I'm not worried about anything breaking or popping stitches. All right. So what I want to know, though, is which way is the back of my top? So I want to make sure that my seam allowance is faced towards the back as I pin my sleeves in place. So here's my shoulder notch, and I'll bring this out just a little bit. wrong way. There you go. And if you missed, there's an episode of It's So Easy where I was making the Bella out of a blue velvet. If you're really new, uh, you might want to watch that because that was a pretty good, pretty good camera work. 
and we're live here, so you never know. All right, so I have my garment facing down, my sleeve fabric right side down. I'm gonna match up my shoulder notch. If you're using pins, make sure you only pin in the seam allowance area and use don't use like quilting pins or anything crazy like that because it can puncture your fabric. So I put a pin where my shoulder notch is and I flip my sleeve over. And this is, I usually do this on my lap, <laughs> but that would look a little weird for camera work. So I'll try to do this on the flat surface you can see. I line this up. I am going to put a few pins here because we're live and I'm trying to lean over a camera. So the curve of your sleeve should match the curve of your top. Make sure that I don't have too much excess fabric. You don't want anything extra in your um, sleeve cap. So if you do, because maybe my fabric shifted while I was cutting it or anything like that, you can slide your sleeve out just a little bit, which is I'm doing that at the bottom. I'll get rid of some of that excess fabric. Why do I like to just pin my sleeve first? Uh, as you know, I'm like a no pin sewing person, but if I pin my entire sleeve first, I can see and make sure that I have everything lined up correctly, that I'm not going to end up sewing my entire sleeve in and get to the end and have like a difference at the end. By pinning it first, I just know everything's lining up correctly. When I go to sew it, I'm not going to have to worry about having too much in the sleeve cap area. You know what I'm wondering if I cut the wrong size sleeve, it's not quite fitting here. And I know that this pattern fits like perfectly. I might have to go back to the cutting board. See how I've got all this excess up here? That will not work with stretch velvet. So let me just make sure. Otherwise, you'll end up with little wrinkles up here. You know, I'm going to go have to go back to the cutting board and make sure that I cut the right size of the sleeve. I grabbed, I'll bet you I cut one size bigger because the sleeve's a little bit bigger than my armhole. So guess what? We're going to have to have a part three. <laughs> Part three, for sure. Did you see that? How my sleeve was just a little bit wider than my arm's eye. So if that happens, go back to the cutting board, <laughs> literally. Make sure, and I don't think I have my pattern right there. Make sure that you cut the right size sleeve. You know me, I always have a lot of different sizes roaming around. I think I grabbed the wrong sleeve because it should fit in there perfectly. No easing, nothing like that. So I'm going to go back to the cutting board after the show before I see you next and make sure that I cut the right size sleeve because it should fit in there perfectly. Your shoulder should fit perfectly and then your curves. There should not be any extra. You should not be easing anything in the sleeve cap at all. You don't want to stretch that arm's eye. So there you know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Liz, that's where your sewing is. Uh, wonder clips can be fine to be used on velvet, Charlene. Just make sure that you use them in the seam allowance. Do not use clips if it goes inside that seam allowance because you'll end up um, hurting the fabric. I, ha I use silk pins. Uh, thin glass head pins would be fine too, Kelly. Definitely. Oh, good, Linda. You saw that episode. Well, you might have to watch it now because I have to go back and recut my sleeves. Yeah, Jackie, I'm wearing the ruched with the twisted neckline. It doesn't even look twisted, does it? If I touch it, you can see that it's twisted. But because the pattern's kind of cool, it's a twisted neckline. Oh, Marcia, yes. Now, if you intentionally want gathers in your sleeve, then good, but you don't want it just from sewing. <laughs> hey, Lisa, great to see you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, it's 2.30. So I'm going to have to go back and cut my sleeves. But before I do that, why don't we do a giveaway? Uh, if you made a comment today, you can win my new Angela Wolf thread cutters. And also, I just want to bring this up one more time so you can see uh, some of the classes, by the way. So let me bring this in place. <laughs> if I can make myself the right size. All right, so this class is on Sunday in California. 
There's two of them. Add a touch of couture to your next garment. You'll be sewing your own bound buttonholes, welt pockets, and curved welt pockets. Uh, you'll be sewing those yourself, and then you'll be embroidering on knit top on knits. Uh, you know I love embroidery on knits. So uh, what I bring to that is I bring knit fabric. I bring stabilizer. You just bring your body, and you get to hang out on the Brother Luminaire. So that's on Sunday. On Saturday, uh, there's quite a few classes. Let me see what we have here. I think I wanted to show you the one jacket, though, because it's hard to show a lot of this in the description. Here you go, right here. A lot of you have asked about this jacket. I've worn it a ton. This is my faux leather where I quilted it to fleece, and I also did this on Ponty Knit. So this class, you will actually be doing two different pieces of fabric. You're not going to be sewing the jacket, but you're going to be designing your own fabric in class, and then you can take it home and use it for a pattern. But you can see I have that all that's all quilted. This is from Threads Magazine years ago. And this section here, too. So that's another class. Uh, oh, and then right below it is my other class. I think this is where you're going to be sewing uh, jacket sleeves. So I will actually be bringing you jacket sleeves, and you're going to practice sewing them, hemming them, adding your buttonholes, um, and making a very couture finish on your jackets. And that's just a, a little bit of what's happening. But if you go on the top and just click each day, the class is open Monday. If you're planning on coming, I cannot wait to see you. But I wanted to let the Wolfpack know right away so you don't miss the opportunity to hang out. I would, I look forward to seeing you. Ah, uh, Denise, by the way, she said she'll be making a rouge tea from the fabric she just bought. I just went on Instagram. And if you all don't follow Denise, she makes a lot of clothes and it looks fantastic. So I just saw your message to me. And you all have to see this photo. If I can open it. Oh, goodness. Don't tell me the photo just expired. <laughs> don't you love Instagram? She posted a beautiful photo of her fabric that she got. Uh, and yes, I saw it right before we went live and it must have just expired. Uh, Jerry, I will not. I'm only going to be at that event. I fly in and I will teach Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and fly out. But yes, that is close to you. Oh, Pat. Well, have fun. Make sure you cut your sleeves the right size. <laughs> oh, gosh, I know. Okay. So I think that was last on my list. Oh, uh, two more notes for all of you, just your news, in case you don't read the newsletter this afternoon. There is a free class next Wednesday. So next Wednesday at noon, see if I can bring the link up. I had it on our Facebook group. And some of you told me that the link was not working. They have fixed that link. So I'll bring it up here, make sure I have this. It's a really long link, but I'll put it in the comments here. The link isn't really this messy, but it looks really messy here. All right, so it's the applique affair. Let me just show this to you. It's totally free. Another one, uh, you know I love these free events when you can learn so much from them. So I'll share my screen so you can see this. Did you see Joanne's new designs? So it's very cool. So here's the link. It will take you to applique affair. Ashley and Eileen will be teaching this. I will be joining at the beginning. All you have to do is click register now. Now there was an error earlier. And this is by the way for next Wednesday at noon. When you click register, if for any reason it doesn't go through, click refresh on your page. Oh, it works. Okay, so you just put your name in, your address, and then proceed to finalize registration. It's totally free though. So in this class, you will be able to let me see if I can go back. Uh, you've seen some of these designs that are Joanne's new things. You're going to get first dibs on a lot of these. Of course, they always have a good sale. Um, so anyways, this is going to be a lot of fun. So this is next Wednesday. So what does that mean for our behind the scenes live? Well, it's going to be at 2 next week, not 1.30. Because this applique affair event at lasts an hour and a half. And I figured that gives you a half an hour to grab a cup of coffee and lunch, and I'll see you back at 2. So next week, the show, show will not be here until 2 p.m. Eastern, which is 1, 12, 11 Pacific, okay? If you have questions on that, and I'll be sending this in the newsletter this afternoon as well, or this evening, I should say. 
Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you can't make it to that on that Wednesday at noon, if you've been to these events before, Dime gives some great deals, but they let the replay up for like two or three days. So even if you can't make the live, you can watch the replay and they still offer those deals. Okay. Is that it? I think that's it. Fashion Sewing Club, we are cutting this top today, um, today at 4.30 Eastern. So I'll see you in a few hours. All right, let's do the big drawing. Who is going to win the new thread cutters? This is kind of really fun, way too much fun actually. And it has a safety. Make sure you close the safety so you don't cut your pants. All right, let's do the drum roll. Who wants to do the drum roll? Let me bring this up. Drum roll, drum roll. And all of your comments from anything, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch are all in this draw. And I'll bring this up. <laughs> I think that's FedEx coming now. Busy day here today. One sec, I just have to share a different screen to bring you up. Hold that thought. All right. Who is the winner of the thread cutters? Gertrude Welsh. Congratulations, Gertrude. Congrats, congrats. All right. I think that was really fun. So, by the way, <laughs> uh, there is another giveaway uh, using a different platform. And this was many of you have entered for celebrating 50,000 subscribers to YouTube. We actually, I think we just broke, we're just about to break 51,000. I've got another drawing. And this is the week that I'll be drawing for a one year Fashion Sewing Club membership. And next week we draw for the sewing machine, which Blaine has given us a brother. It's actually an embroidery machine, which is amazing. So that's gonna be for next week. So watch your newsletter in case you haven't already entered. So today let's draw one more for one year membership to Fashion Sewing Club. Good luck, good luck. Good luck. Let's see, good luck, good luck. Did I click the wrong button? Hold on a second. <laughs> this one isn't as easy as the last one. All right, the winner is, let me download your badge. Oh, it's not gonna download. Yes, it has to download. Hold on a second. This one isn't quite as slick as the last one. And I know who this is. She's always on our live shows. Actually, she taught me how to say her name right. I know now a few, few of you are going to be like, wait, I know who that is. <laughs> Let's bring this up. Bring, bring, come on. Winter badge. This is like watching grass grow, guys. <laughs> Now, everyone that I've mispronounced her name is like, is it me? Is it me? Lois Erdman, congratulations. Lois, you get one year Fashion Sewing Club membership. Uh, if you're already in there, you will still get one year added to your membership. If you're not, then we will give you a membership. For some reason, I think you're already in there. So you might have just gotten a free year. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at everyone that's wondering, did I misspell your name? Yeah, I can see about three people here. Congratulations, Lois. So by the way, I um, went on last week. Some of you had said you sent me private messages. I'm going to go back in there because I did not see them. But if I'll just have to look you up <laughs> to figure out uh, how to find you. So I think there was so many messages you might have gotten bumped down. So if I did not reply to you, please send me another private message. You can always send me an email too. So that was uh, Jackie. A membership is to the Fashion Sewing Club. The Fashion Sewing Club, you can join monthly or annually. Uh, we're always doing something cool. Today, last week, 
we cut, we designed this top. This week we're going to be sewing it. And you also have access to, I don't know, Fashion Sewing Club. Is there over 200 videos now in there? So uh, we meet uh, minimum three times a month. And one time is Zoom so we can all see each other and do show and tell. Uh, the other times are usually um, something tutorial wise, similar to this live, but in a smaller group. If you'd like to be a member, we would love to have you. And let's see it. You just go to AngelaWolf.com or Fashion Sewing with AngelaWolf.com and you click right at the top and that is where you can uh, join. And if you join before this afternoon in the next hour or so, you can join us for sewing that top. All right. Any other questions? Here you go. I put that right there for you. We'd love to have you, Jackie. Oh, thanks, Helen. <laughs> it's great to see you all. So now I have to go back and cut my sleeves. In the Fashion Sewing Club this afternoon, before I start, I'll have to tell you what happened to the sleeve. I don't know. I have to go check my pattern and see what I did wrong. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks. So great to see you. Have a wonderful day. I will see Fashion Sewing Club this afternoon. I will be shipping out all that velvet tomorrow. As soon as it gets here, I'm going to cut and ship. So you will have it before next week. Darlene, where did you get your necklace? Uh, from Wynn. This is one from Wynn. You know, I love wearing crosses. Uh, 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 just trying to bar, um, oh goodness. Patricia gave me a beautiful one too. Hers is a little bit longer than this. This one has uh, little diamonds and uh, Wynn bought me this years ago. And I'll have to remind him it's our anniversary, right? <laughs> All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, you can always message me. Don't forget to join the Angela of Patterns group. And newsletter is going out this evening or tomorrow morning, one or the other. So if you don't get it, make sure tomorrow that um, I will post it in a copy of it in, the, in our Facebook group. All right, I think that's great. That's enough news for today. Have a wonderful day, everyone. See you later.